Welcome back to the Naval News with Subbrief. Today we're going to go over some new actions by Japan that kind of shocked the world. Japan is doing a major upgrade to their offensive and precision long-range capability with their navies right now. They signed into an agreement and in accordance with their 2025 defensive plan, the purchase of 400 Tomahawks from the United States. Tomahawks that they will put on their Aegis capable destroyers, all eight of them eventually, and the pro process has already started. Initially, they in intended on buying five or uh, the Block 5 Tomahawk, which is the most uh, up to date, recent, capable Tomahawk missile the United States builds for ourselves and also sell it to Japan. But because of the urgency and the need that Japan felt for buying missiles right away, they split their offer into two purchase bundles where they're going to buy block four right now. It's already started. They're going to get 200 of those approximately. And then later on, 26, uh, 2027, going to get another 200, buy another 200 of the block fives whenever those come online. So as we upgrade our own fleet, Japan is getting the same capability added to their Aegis capable destroyers and it fits well within their strategic operations command overview of how they want to prosecute uh, Japanese defense going into the future. They're very uh, dedicated to combining arms, including electronic warfare, a huge emphasis on that, and then using that information for precision, long range, second uh, counter strikes, secondary strikes, or even initial pinpoint targeted strikes against adversaries and it fits well into their plan so japan in summary is kind of getting a huge offensive and second strike capability from the united states the process has already started the first destroyer is already operating out of san diego california uh that began earlier this year it's a multi-year program uh that ship will be part of the training program hardware and software uh, upgrade uh, program for the next year, next 12 months minimum, probably closer to 15 in total. And whenever she's done, uh, the process will continue with multiple destroyers, probably two or more at a time coming to the United States or getting the software upgrades uh, over in Japan itself. It is a really good uh, program to increase the offensive capability of our allies over there with the same systems and communications that we use in our own Navy so that we can work together to secure that Indo and Western Pacific uh, region the way we are. And if you enjoy watching ships get upgraded like this in video games, have I got a game for you called War Thunder. You can do the same thing there. War Thunder, if you don't know, is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made and is available for free on PC with consoles and mobile devices as well. Take command of over 2,500 vehicles, planes, helicopters, and ships from 10 nations, ranging from biplanes to armored cars from the 1920s to fighter jets and main battle tanks of today. Immerse yourself in intense combat of War Thunder, where incredibly detailed vehicles, realistic graphics, and authentic sound effects place you right at the helm of the most powerful war machines of our time. War Thunder has one of the most sophisticated vehicle damage models in gaming. Every vehicle is intricately modeled down to its individual components like engines, fuel tanks, weapons, and crew, all susceptible to damage or disabling from enemy fire. And different types of armor, shells, and missiles behave like their real-world counterparts. War Thunder offers three distinct modes, each ramping up in realism progressively. You have arcade, which suits the craving fast-paced matches uh, with enhanced vehicle performance and simplified physics. On the other end of the spectrum, you have simulator mode, which ditches all the guardrails and is the ultimate challenge for players. And then you have realistic mode, which is the middle ground that strikes a balance between intensity and authenticity, you choose how you want to play War Thunder. Now, join the worldwide community of over 95 million players in epic PvP battles every day and delve into the breathtaking experience that is War Thunder with unmatched wealth of high-quality content to discover. There's simply no better game suited for fans of military history just like you. War Thunder is available for free. You can play it on PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and mobile. Sign up using my link in the pinned comment or video description. You'll get a massive bonus pack of multiple premium vehicles and a vehicle decorator. For new and returning players, if you haven't played more than six months uh, on PC or console, you get the same deal. Click the War Thunder link today.
Now, going back to what's going on in Japan over there, why are they in such a rush? Why are they upgrading their uh, Tomahawk missile capability immediately? Why did they push that program forward to get Block 4 right now instead of waiting for Block 5 to come online in 2026 and and forward? Well, part of the reason is right here on your screen where you see uh, China and Russia annually and becoming more and more frequent are sailing aggressively around Japan and in those waters So Japan is watching this activity go on with increasing frequency and capability from both sides. It's clear that China and Russia are improving their cooperation, working together. So Japan wants to refute that or try to keep the balance of power at the very least by increasing their own capability. And buying these Tomahawks is just part of that program. Other um, indicators here, as you can see from this graph, this is from the 2025 uh, defensive report of uh, Japanese defense and why they're justifying this cost is you can see uh, an up ramp, an uptick of activity off the coast of Japan and in their uh, EEZ, their their, their theater of influence from China and Russia and other aggressive nations like North Korea operating in 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 and around their spaces. So this is uh, kind of the justification that they're using to spend this kind of money. It's also a good uh, life extender for the ships themselves, keeping them relevant by today's military standards. This is not just a military upgrade for Japan. This is also a diplomatic effort that is global. They're sending emissaries to countries around the world, including China, by the way, and Mongolia, uh, to talk to them and get a feel for how Japan stands in the eyes of these countries. Now, on this chart, you can see where they frequent countries more than five times a year. And then uh, with the color code of uh, twice or once going to orange and yellow, you can see them where they only go a couple times a year. The point is, Japan is not limiting themselves diplomatically to their own region. They're visiting Europe and America. Australia is a frequent visitor. Uh, Australia and Japan almost had a submarine deal long before they had one with the United States and France, for instance. France beat out uh, Japan back in the early uh, 2010s uh, for, for that submarine deal. So they're going around the world uh, with this diplomatic effort while also increasing their capability of electronic warfare and offensive weapons capability across all platforms, space-based, air-based, sea-based, and submarine-based, and land-based capabilities all at the same time. Here's an example of what Japan has been doing in exercising their defensive intelligence agencies, working with other uh, intelligence agencies around the world, as well as conducting humanitarian aid missions and uh, military uh, deployments together, war games, if you will, uh, with the United States and other allies in, in, in the region. They've been very active for many years, building these relationships so that if any conflict does break out in the region, uh, they have a wide pull of people supporting them. And they're a valuable member to the uh, Australians and South Koreans, and of course the Americans and the Philippines all working together to try and maintain the balance of power in this region as China really ramps up their offensive and military capability, uh, and then exacerbating that with offensive operations in and around the South China Sea and uh, and around the Philippines. Of course, Taiwan uh, being a big part of that. So this is not just limited, this increase in military capability in Japan, this is not just limited to the Navy and to the Air Force. They are uh, upgrading their land forces as well, including their air bases in both size and uh, number of airplane capability, uh, radar capability, personnel assigned to those uh, locations. They're increasing all fronts in being ready to defend their islands and uh, maybe even project power as a counterpunch should it come to that. This is an all front press in capability push uh, towards uh, modernizing their entire military from just a, a Japanese defense force to a true military capable of offensive and power projection operations. They're not there yet, but they're well on their way. And they recognize the danger that they're in by not doing this immediately. 
This is a very good sign for everybody. So we'll continue to keep an eye on this as they uh, progress through 2026 and 2027. They're working closely with the U.S. Navy in increasing those uh, capabilities on board those eight destroyers. Uh, we're also going to be doing videos on those eight destroyers. Those will be coming out over the next eight weeks. So uh, I look forward to seeing you over there. Leave your comments below and don't forget to click the link in the description and support the sponsor that supports this video. Check out War Thunder now by using my link to sign up and get a massive free bonus pack for PC and consoles. Click the link in the description or in the pinned comment.